Welcome to Looking Back at Medford History. I'm Laura Duggan, your hostess. Today's guests are Jerry Tremblay and Nancy Blatton from the Cyrus Dallin Art Art Museum located at 611 Massachusetts Ave in Arlington. And we're going to show our first image. I know all of you out there will recognize this, but oh, here. Cyrus Dallin was born in Utah in 1861 and died in Arlington, Massachusetts in 1944. After 40 years working and living there, he is a celebrated American sculptor, educator, and indigenous rights activist. His works are found in many art museums and are well known as the iconic appeal to the great spirit found in front of Boston's Museum of Fine Arts. And here we are. The picture? There it is. <laughs> I'm sure everyone has seen that. <laughs> I hope so. And you wondered who the artist was. <laughs> and the other iconic uh, sculpture that you can find in Boston, I think this is an image, sort of represents Boston on many, many postcards, is the one found in the north end of Paul Revere. And there it is, just by the old North Church. Remember that? One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be. <laughs> Jerry and Nancy, welcome to Looking Back at Medford History. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, I'm delighted you could join us. Well, my first question for you is basically the origin story of this wonderful art museum that's very close to Medford. Yes. Mm. So uh, it starts with James McGough, who was the town barber across the street from the um, town hall in Arlington. And to the right of Arlington Town Hall, Mm -hmm. is a lovely flagstaff with four figures on each corner and it's about 70 feet tall and mm -hmm. it has a um, an allegorical statue on the top we call it either the allegory of Massachusetts or Massachusetts agriculture and Jim used to walk over there and say this is I mean this is fine workmanship who's the sculptor of this who put this together and he couldn't find out so he went into town hall he talked to people there they had no information so somebody said um, well you need to just do the research on this because apparently nobody living knows the source of this and it had been dedicated around 1910, 1911. Mm -hmm. So he did, and he found out it was Cyrus Dallin, who also lived in Arlington at 69 Oakland Ave. Mm -hmm. And Jim also realized that there were uh, statues in other buildings in town. So some were in schools, some were um, in the Robbins Library, some were in Town Hall. <laughs> and he had... Um, a, a mandate, so to speak, from the um, town meeting, find the statues and let us know what they are, etc. And he found several. And he even asked them um, and the Arlington Cultural Council if he could restore them and they would, would pay for it. And so he did that over time. And he re I would stay, say he restored six, seven statues and put them in a building that had been moved down from Mass Ave to the center of town which is now the museum but is called the Jefferson Cutter House and that sort of was the the beginning of the museum. You know something when I came to visit your museum the first time with my husband he was the the docent I didn't realize he was, he was a complete force behind right. getting this st uh, established. Right. That is amazing. He's a quite a guy. 85-year-old, right? Yes. Dosa, and the most amazing presentation and completely dazzled us about and enthralled us about uh, Cyrus Dolan. He, has, like he's, he was the one. He's the one. Wow. So uh, after he had found these statues and was mm -hmm. getting some of them restored, um, I think there was an act of town meeting that established the Dallin Committee oh. to see if we could find a location oh. for a museum and house what ended up being just the beginnings of our collection. Mm -hmm. So um, 
we talked to different people at uh, Town Hall and ultimately settled on the Jefferson Cutter House, which had been there oh, m maybe five to ten years in was that it, location. Was it another location before? It had been Up Avenue where okay. the Myrax um, Honda lot is. Okay. And they wanted that for... Um, for the, their car automobile business. Okay. And uh, they gave it to the town. They gave the house to they the town. They gave the house to the town because oh. it's, it's an 1881, three? Yep. 1881, I think. 1881, 1881 house. house. So it's like an older house, yeah. And it was close to the, the mill, uh, the mills that were on Mill, um, mill Brook. Mm -hmm. And that's how the house was originally established because okay. the first owners were millers. Okay, so it was owned by a miller. It was owned by a miller. All right. And then mm -hmm. it gets in eighteen um, in nineteen eighty six or so. It's moved down Ave, but down Mass Ave mm -hmm. on a flatbed truck. Flatbed truck. Mm -hmm. truck. Okay. I was teaching my Latin class, All and right. one of my students looks out. I was my room faces mess half. One of my students looks out and says, there's a house coming down the street. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And this kid repeats it and says, there's a house coming down the street. Did you say, be quiet, sit down? <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you, crazy? how many interruptions a day? It's just unbelievable. Right. <laughs> the whole class stood up and went to the windows uh -huh. with, without my permission. Uh -huh. But we only had like five minutes to go. Oh. So I said, you know, this is actually historic. Yes. You will remember this. Yes. So, yes, just let's watch this house go down the street. <laughs> you can't compete with that. No, it, I couldn't. Nobody I, nobody could compete no, with that. No, and it was the, certainly the first time I ever saw a house walk going down Mass Ave. <laughs> and then it was put in place and restored. It was um, okay. And the uh, Chamber of Commerce was in there, and they still are. Mm -hmm. And um, four rooms, there are four rooms mm -hmm. on the first floor, each with a fireplace. And there are two big rooms on the second floor, mm -hmm. each with a fireplace. But it was said to be a two-family house. And I have to say, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how they could do that. And I mean, there were door, there are doors everywhere, yeah, in and right. out. Okay. But it's, it's unique. We it's can unique. say that. I have to tell you, I had an art class in there once too. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. And that, and I always wondered, was on the top part of the building. I never. Explore until our, a mutual friend of ours, John Harrison, said, you need to go there mm -hmm. and uh, into that museum. And during the pandemic, what I did is I went on your marvelous webpage and took my the virtual tour, mm -hmm. which is, any of you can do when you go on. What is the webpage? It's um, you know uh, www.dallin.org. Wonderful. Yes. That's see, easy <laughs> enough. Yeah. 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 So you can go on that and uh, and see that. But it's even better to go see these these this, these works of art in person. Yes. Okay. So that's how it came into being. Right. The, and the property. You got the house down there, and uh, James is like behind us. He's gathering up artwork around. That right. He can and find. getting it restored, and mm -hmm. then he goes back to town meeting because he has input and the permission mm -hmm. of. Um, the the town town manager and the redevelopment board mm -hmm. because they were suggesting the Jefferson Cutter House because they do they didn't want the building empty you know they want activity in that sure. building for many reasons obviously mm -hmm. and um, and it passed town hall a uh, town meeting oh. and we were given um, a couple of rooms on the first floor, and we opened the first gallery in 1998. 1998, so that's when you opened. Huh? Right, so, and wow. okay. many, da we didn't know, but over time, we, we were informed, because we would get phone calls or a letter from a Dallin family member, and there are <laughs> Dallins alive and well, and and visiting us and supporting us are in eastern in the Massachusetts. Area, Arlington area, or, or well, further? Ipswich, Ipswich um, okay. Groveland, Groveland. Somebody's in um, Pat's in New Hampshire. New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Dallin family is all over because they originated from Utah, mm -hmm. and um, as I said, over time we've had people con contact us from Colorado, Texas, <laughs> the West Coast. Um, a good friend of the museum is Denise Dallin Wheeler, who's in her mid 90s. Oh, wow. uh, and I talked to her this past week. Um, she lives in Evanston, Wyoming, and she's visited us several times. Yeah. So the good news is 
the Dallins are out there and alive and well. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. It is. I wonder if any of them are sculptors. Um, not that I know <laughs> of, but I'm know. sure they have that talent. I well, I should say I think um, Diane Majid is is a can sketch and mm -hmm. do art, but that yeah. I'm sure that's in the genes. But he was extraordinary. From when I was when James was taught, describing to me how here he is in Utah, you know, in this kind of not a really fancy house or it's really. Um, very simple means. Right. And he said that he started making sculptures when he was quite young out of butter. I never heard that That's before. what James told me. I've <laughs> heard the butter story <laughs> but, before. But never heard that story? No. I don't know. I don't think she had refrigeration. His mother had refrigeration. Okay. Uh, so I think that would be a messy job. Or maybe lard or something. Maybe. He like, was. He worked in the clay mines. Okay. And he, he yeah. worked with Native Americans in the clay mines. Uh -huh. And when they had breaks, he would... He would um, use the clay, well, he, silver mines and clay mines, but mm -hmm. he would use the clay and do portraits of people. And um, one portrait, I think, he had put in a window in downtown Springville, mm -hmm. and that's when some people started to recognize his art. So he comes from, you know, just nothing. farming, nothing. Nothing. And, and he starts showing some, you know, uh, skills in art, you know, and he's working in a mine. Yep. Yeah, and I, I understand he grew up with the indigenous people in the area. Yes, he did. The tribes there, so right. he was really played with them, and really got he was invited to their into their their places, yes. you know, and and really he grew up with that. That's part of right. his and, his upbringing. And yeah. as an aside, and this uh -huh. shocked me when I found this out, he established archery as an Olympic sport. Oh, and he was one of the first competitors and he won a gold medal in the olympics in the olympics oh my <laughs> i think it was the 1930s i, I think so it must yeah. have been that oh that's really amazing i did want to just briefly like uh find out how you two got involved with the museum i always like to find out how people are pulled in you know because you're, li you're living in the community probably and how so let's start let's start over with you first. sure so uh, <laughs> i've been working in financial services for over 25 years mm -hmm. and i took a step back from that um, to help my parents out who are aging in place um, was looking for some part-time work always wanted to work with a nonprofit. always mm -hmm. enjoyed museums mm -hmm. and lucky for me the dallin museum was looking for some help oh. um, so i joined them in september of 2018 uh, to help mm. grow their group tour business, mm -hmm. trying to uh, do outreach to the community to get larger uh, tours in. To, uh, and that was going well until the pandemic happened. Yes, right <laughs> so that, that type of uh, thing is uh, mm -hmm. getting some steam back again. But mm -hmm. um, I was able to switch into doing other things for the museum, um, like this type of thing, telling mm -hmm. the, uh, the Paul Revere story mm -hmm. um, with various um, senior centers and the Concord Museum. Oh, you're like a guest speaker and you go out? Uh, yeah. Community? yeah. Well, great. I was doing it via Zoom, but I have gone out as now well. Now you've been so. able. A lot yes. of us are now going out. Yes, thankfully. Um, yeah. well, either way is good. But um, So that's, that's, that's how, how you got working. Now. Yes. That's, that's. So I was still teaching at Arlington High. All right. And I got a phone call from my brother, Stephen Gilligan, who's town treasurer. Okay. And he said, you have to call Jim McGough. Well, I knew Jim was the town barber. I said, <laughs> I'm saying, why do I want to go to the barbers? So he said, uh, he's putting together a committee, and he needs you. I said, Stephen, he doesn't need me. Yes, he does. He <coughs> said, um, he wants to establish the Dallin Museum. And what my brother did behind my back was tell Jim that <laughs> I had worked... Breath? I had worked at the MFA oh. in the classical department, ah. and so <laughs> he, my brother, well, you know how brothers are, they always mm -hmm. involve you in stuff. <laughs> for, they involve you before they ask, and, um, and so I called him, and he said, oh, I'd like you to be on the Dallin Committee because we'd like to establish a museum, and then, and then maybe you could stay and help us set up. Wow. Well, I stayed. That was like 25 years. Right. Well, <laughs> what, 1996, probably. Mm -hmm. And I've been volunteering ever since. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. But it, it all starts like with one citizen who sees some art mm -hmm. in his town, wants to find out who the artist exactly. is, then, and then finds more. And then he starts going to City Hall and, he, and pulling in volunteers. And now we have this wonderful museum. We do. And that's great. Let's look at one of the, another one of the images that you can see at this museum. Right there. Okay, this is the one 
Oh, the one that um, it's like a copy, I guess, of what they did. Yeah, this is a smaller version. Appeal to the Great Spirit. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And what can you tell me about, like, who paid for this um, to be made? I think it was actually a Medford person help. Oh, Somebody by the name um, of the yeah, Brooks family? Yeah, so Peter Chardon Brooks. We have heard that because there's yep. a fellow that does it uh, about the art that was collected. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and that's where we learned, I learned, that the Brooks family were behind, you know, getting this, getting the commission paid for. I, mean, I don't know how much they paid. Yeah, so the, it, the commission, um, he, the project was underway and the funding was running out. Okay. So that's when Peter Chardon Brooks stepped oh, so he in. So stepped in, okay. And said he would um, give the additional funds necessary, but he wanted to have some say as to where the, um, the statue was placed. Because I think originally it was intended to go somewhere in the Fenway. But he the wanted Fenway? it. He, he yeah, really? so we're in the Fenway. Oh. I'm not. I'm not sure specifically where, oh, but okay. he wanted it to be in front of the Museum of Fine Arts. Because I think uh, I was told he said that they wanted to put it inside the museum. But I guess so. The is it Brooks or the artist that wanted it in front of the museum? Brooks. It was Brooks. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Okay, yeah. Brooks did. Um, okay. There is a small appeal to the Great Spirit in the museum somewhere. I think it's in the Art of the Americas Gallery, or it oh. was at one point. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. It's still on display. That's really interesting. Yeah, I got that Peter Brooks. So, okay, we have that one. Let's go see another image. This is the first room that you, when you all come into the museum, mm -hmm. you take a left, right? Yes. And it's basically um, indigenous people, all the work from that. And I heard that you got a grant to, to formulate this. Was we got an, an earmark um, from the state mm -hmm. to um, refurbish that gallery. Yeah. And... Um, so it was very helpful because it, the gallery has looked the same for many years, mm -hmm. and uh, we were very grateful for that grant. And um, Heather worked with a designer, mm -hmm. and we have um, a new look, and we have an audio question and answer that is between um, um, a man named Forrest Kutch. He's a mm -hmm. native Utah Indian. And um, we know him reasonably well. And Heather, had, Heather our curator had, and administrative director, had um, contacted him and said, we want a dialogue with Cyrus Dallin and Native person mm -hmm. um, because there's misunderstanding um, by current people yes. about Dallin's works of Native Americans. Some people think it's a misappropriation mm -hmm. of ethnicity, mm -hmm. but in fact, he grew up with them, knew them so well. He um, went to, he went to um, DC mm -hmm. uh, to support some Native Americans that were- He was um, a strong advocate. Test he was, in they his were lifetime. testifying and he was supporting He's their- early, no one was doing that back then. No. I mean, he no was one. like a lone person out there. Right. And so people should know that. And it's, so it's no surprise that he had an interest into portraying the people that he grew up with. Right. You know? Exactly. So is this, what is, do you know anything about this um, image here, the statue? Yes, this one, um, this is, um, there are only three plastic copies made of a bronze original. This is rather large and okay. very heavy. Okay. <laughs> and uh, when we, um, someone saw it in a shop. A shop? Yes. <laughs> Oh and the all the feathers in the back had been cut off. No. So that oh. it could be put on a mantle yeah, and shoved yeah. back against mm -hmm. the wall of the mantle. Mm -hmm. And um, we checked. In fact, it was, this is called the Indian Head. Mm -hmm. And it was the made for the Indian Head Bank in southern uh, New Hampshire. All right. And, um, oh, it was... It was painted gold, mm -hmm. and all of those feathers in the back were cut off. It was in terrible, terrible shape. So uh, we gave it to Bob Shore of Skylight Studios. Oh, I have met. He's really oh, he's, he's incredible. A fabulous yes, he's artist. A fabulous. He is. And his shop restored it. And they did the restoration on this. Yep. Okay. So yep. so somebody saw. How did that person? I want to recognize that it was something from. Uh, Cyrus. I think I think that one might be signed. Do you recall if it's signed? 
I think it is. Was it signed? Yeah. Oh, a somebody... lot of his works are signed. Oh, that's good. A good thing too, because that could still be, you know, in the front of the bank, you know, or in a corner somewhere. Well, the bronze one was in front of the bank, and okay, the, front, that okay. building got sold. But right. it, it, I don't know that it's still there. I haven't been to. I think it's in Nashua, it but it used to be yeah. when I I lived three or four years in Manchester when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and that was uh, what I would see in the bank. Mm. So when I came oh to Boston <laughs> and I saw the Shaman Indian, I was like, "What? What, <laughs> <laughs> what about our guys mm -hmm. in karma, Manchester? Karma going on here? Yeah, I, think. I it's guess sort of ending up here with this museum. Yeah. I think. <laughs> I guess. You know? So I guess people should out there be looking at if you see some interesting art. Look and see if you can see a signature and maybe Google that name, and it might be some famous mm -hmm. artist that mm -hmm. nobody's aware of, but it's just <laughs> languishing there. Give us a call. And, oh, yeah, and especially be if it's Cyrus Dolan, should call the museum? Absolutely, because call? we can. We certainly could give it a home. <laughs> we could give it a home, but we could verify it, too. You know, if somebody we'll wanted to, to, to purchase something for themselves, mm -hmm. we could mm -hmm. tell them what we know. Now, we can't always say this is... Exactly yeah. true. Don't ask it what, us what it's worth because that's not what we do. That's you go to an auction house. I can understand that. Yes. <laughs> but you know, we'll do the best we can for you. Let's see another uh, an image here. We have from the uh, in indigenous. Let's see. Oh yeah, this one is Sacagawea. Sacagawea. I'm glad you said it, so I didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one. I love that one. I do too. What I like especially it, now she. She was 16 years old when she went on the expedition with Lewis and Clark. Right. And it's because she could speak two or three native languages mm -hmm. that it worked because it was made up of people that spoke French. Um, her husband spoke one native language, but she also spoke... Spell. She might have been captured by another she tribe. She had been. She had been. That's how they, they said pick up the different languages. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. But she was 16 years old when 16. she had this baby. Whoa. And yeah. um, they waited for her to deliver the baby mm -hmm. before they took off because they really needed her in this expedition. So she, she, she has the baby and then the puts it in and off she's on this yep. trek. Yep. <laughs> and the, But the baby's adorable. The face yeah. is, you know, pudgy cheeks. Just adorable oh, look in at his that. cradle board, <laughs> and they call she called him Pomp, mm -hmm. which means firstborn in her language. Oh, it does okay. Although, I think she called him Jean Baptiste Charbonneau. Charbonneau, yes, mm -hmm. it is Charbonneau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was the father Toussaint, or is the baby? I think mm -hmm. this is. I think the her husband was Toussaint Charbonneau, and I think. Um, Pomp is Jean Baptiste. You know who raised the funds for that expedition? It was not paid by the government. It was oh, it was okay to go on. They wanted to explore. It. Sure. Dolly Madison, you've heard of oh, her. Oh yes. Dolly Madison is the one who raised the funds for that expedition. There's a little bit of trivia for you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I? Because I have a play about her, so I I oh. came across that and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Again, uh, you know, a citizen, not official member of the government, doing things. Exactly. Making things happen. happen. Right. Let's see what else we've got here from. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Now, moving to the next room here. Do this you want to do that one? Uh, sure. <laughs> so that, that is the angel Moroni. Um, Cyrus was approached by the, um, what do we call the Church of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and Latter-day Latter Latter -day Saints mm -hmm. um, to create this uh, monument for the top of their temple. Uh, his family was originally Mormons. Um, they became Unitarians, I believe. Um, and Cyrus was on the fence about it. He wasn't really sure that he wanted to do it because he did not believe in angels. Oh, um, okay. But his mother stepped in and said, you know, <laughs> you should get your Mom. name out there. And, you know, <laughs> kind of gave him the kind of encouragement that mothers would give and said, this is a good, good commission. You should go for it. Mm -hmm. And he did create this. Um, and now it is a top. Mormon temples all over the world. Including the one that's on Route 2. That's exactly. right. And I've that's often really gone by. by, I had no idea, you know, until I went to the museum, that he had created that image. Yep. And they got to make copies. It's on all of the different mm -hmm. yep. uh, Mormon temples, huh? Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? So when you go down Route 2, get a little way. That's that Cyrus Dolan yep, sculpture up there. Up there. <laughs> let's see. Let's see another one. Oh, yeah. This is... That's the allegory of Massachusetts. Oh, the al yeah. now, okay. Now, 
Where, can you tell so me So that's the this? one that that's on top of, well, that was the original on top of that Robbins Memorial Flagstaff. Um, in Arlington? In yes. Arlington, okay. in All front right. of the town yeah. hall. Mm -hmm. Uh, she had been up there for about 90 years, and uh, it's a bronze, mm -hmm. and it was really um, suffering from um, corrosion oh, and yeah. rain, and uh, it was cracked, and Ooh. people, a few people had noticed that it was kind of wavering on super windy days. <laughs> yeah, it was spinning so, in the wind. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of <laughs> terrifying. So, so uh, oh. they took it down and oh. replaced it with a resin copy, um, mm -hmm. and we had this restored, and... Um, I think that now that it's at eye level in our collection, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people thought that originally that she was holding um, a torch, kind of yeah. like the Statue of Liberty, but it's actually um, a sheaf of tobacco leaves. Oh. That's another thing I learned since working at the museum. I uh -huh. guess tobacco was a major cash crop of Massachusetts at one, mm -hmm. time. At one time. So okay. that's why she was holding well, that's that. That's interesting. Let's go on to our next image. Oh, this is getting moving on to his style of painting. Mm -hmm. uh, and as um, James was telling me, he was basically doing his art around the time of the Impressionists, you know, Renoir, Monet, mm -hmm. and, and also he was good friends with John Singer Sargent, yes. which we, I think we all know. Should, if you don't know who he is, Google him immediately. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. And so what can you tell about the paintings? Um, Sort of the style of, um, is it mainly Do landscapes? You, want to, you tell them about the restoration, actually, because well, you were involved with the restoration okay. of that the restoration so, yeah. so we have, huh. um, well, we see four. The museum actually has a dozen Cyrus mm. Allen paintings. The one in on the right bottom, I think, is the first one we should talk about because that's um, yes. during his palace, uh, Paris, Period. Oh yeah, when he's in Paris. When right? he's in Paris, mm -hmm. so this um, is maybe eighteen eighty eight. That's about right. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> of course, he was learning sculpture, mm -hmm. but on weekends to get away from the hard grind mm -hmm. of being in the studio learning to sculpt, he and his <laughs> artist friends would go to uh, outside Paris. And this is a place called Auvergnois, ah. and it was a little village outside mm -hmm. of Paris. And um, it's actually, there were some Mormon friends of his also in Paris at the um, oh. Ecole des Beaux Arts. Yes, uh, they were um, supported there by the Mormon Church because they were learning uh, European painting oh. so they could decorate the inside of the Mormon oh, temple that was being built around that time. So um, <clears throat> so he went out and, and would paint these scenes mm -hmm. and in a letter that uh, John Haffin had written, a Mormon painter, mm -hmm. a Mormon painter of the interior of the temple in right, Salt yep. Lake, John uh, described it as a very picturesque uh, village with old barns and homes and walls. Um, and he, they, they just loved it because it was quiet and it wasn't so crazy as the artist's life in it's Paris. It's nice places to visit from time to time. Exactly. <laughs> and um, now, Auvergne-sur-Oise is actually a suburb of Paris, oh, as I found out from one of our trustees, right. who actually is a, a, a oh, French okay. girl, Marie. yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marie, Marie um, and Marie Delaunay, mm -hmm. and um, we have this on permanent loan mm -hmm. from one of the Dallin family members. How nice! That's great. Yeah, we I love it because it, oh. because it's the only piece we have from his. His Paris period, From the Paris period, and he yes. may have sold other paintings in Paris Probably or even did. in the U.S., but yes. we don't know of them, and we don't know where they might be. Is there? I guess that's, that would be a big search to put out for the yeah. whole country. Yeah, it would. looking for. But with the internet, it's possible to yeah. put out maybe looking for any. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a museum that can be put in. Okay, uh, let's move. Let's see what else we have <clears throat> from that next image. 
Oh, all I cats. love this. All the cats. <laughs> Do you want to take them? Yep, that one's very, <laughs> very popular. Um, if there are ever little kids in the museum and they might not be so enthralled with the, <laughs> with the tour like everybody else is, we like to showcase this to them because they, they love it. So in the background there, you can see uh, Cyrus Dallin's three sons, uh, Bertram, Arthur, and Lawrence. And Lawrence is the youngest one over there on the right. And so the story goes, when they were sitting for that, that bust of the three of them, um, Lawrence was getting very antsy, and mm -hmm. he heard his friends playing outside, and he couldn't sit there anymore. He's like, I'm, I'm going out to play. Why don't you do one of the cat? <laughs> uh, and when he came back in for dinner that evening, this sculpture was the sitting cat at was his there? dinner place. Oh, my gosh. So, that is something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We like to try to, you know, try to see if we can have the kids guess how the Dallin got the cat to sit still for so long in order like to that. sculpt it. But it's just a kind of fun way to engage them, but it's a very popular piece. Yeah, in and the gallery. kids respond to that yeah. question. They yeah. have yeah. come up with some of the, What's the cutest crazy? answers. What's the craziest oh. thing they've come up with? I don't know. They. Yeah. I don't Food. recall. Tape a mouse yeah. to the floor. You know, yeah, if, yeah like if you look at something <laughs> yeah. you know, like that, so he's got his eyes like this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe yeah. even, yeah. You know, maybe he probably got a live thing and put it up like that to hold the attention, <laughs> you think? Some, kids, some kids said, take a photograph with your phone. Oh, well, yeah. No, yeah. because this is not the right <laughs> period. Oh, no, no, they didn't, have, they didn't have them back then. <laughs> right. Okay, let's go on to the next image. And oh, my that's boys. the sons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, four son the three that, sons. Um, yes. That piece is in the Robbins Memorial Library. Okay. When you go in that, that, the, um, the main in, entrance. In Arlington. Yes. 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 Next yes. to the elevator, if people are looking Near for the it. elevator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Oh, let's see what else. Oh, this is a. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, mother and child. Yep. Let's see. Image so the, of the three girls. Oh, the medallion, yeah. He started doing these also, I guess, a commission? Yeah. Um, so this is a bas-relief of his wife, Vittoria, and his oldest son, Bertram. Okay. Um, I think the, the interesting thing about this one is, is is the composition is kind of that classic Renaissance style of, of um, a mother and a baby. And mm -hmm. up in the corners, there are cherubs, and mm -hmm. there's, the, there's the lilies on the side of it. So it's mm -hmm. very, um, very much in a Renaissance style. Probably when he was in Paris, been. he saw this kind of art. And sure. I just, yep. I, I, I remember how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> that. One of those. Do a little Renaissance version, right. right? Let's see the next one. Now, who is this lady? That's Dallin's mother. That's his mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there's mother. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so that so his, and then up on the wall to the left is his wife Victoria, mm -hmm. and then on the other side is a painting that he did of a woman named Mrs. Hall. Um, he lived with the Hall family in Charlestown uh, back when he was a starving artist and mm -hmm. working on uh, the first few versions of the Paul Revere Monument. Oh yes. Do you have a good a close up of Mrs. I Hall? I don't know. Yeah. Do we have? I have to take a. Do we have a close one up? Because uh, there's a story oh, yeah, about the acquisition, and well, if you, you can, don't, that's fine. This is like, uh, you can see she was a pioneer woman, pretty much. You can, you can see. She actually, we believe she was an invalid, and she's oh, right. Really? Yep. Oh, and we're she's talking about Mrs. Hall. Yeah. Was an invalid. Okay. Miss, the, oh, the we are talking was, about the mother. Well, this mother was a pioneer woman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll back off. No, I'm just looking at, I mean, I'm looking at this sculpture. Yep. That says pioneer woman to me. Exactly. Yes. Nothing else. Uh, that really does. Actually, that's the title of it. <laughs> oh. I didn't know Well, you know what it is? It's my mother here, yeah. but with a bonnet on it yeah, in yeah. Springville, Utah. It's ah. called the Pioneer Mother. And I, oh wow, you know, and my family came across in the 1850s in cover wagons to California right. from the East Coast. So there we are, the Ritters. That was my family. Wow. Then. And they and my my father recorded, I guess, from somebody who wrote wrote about well, Frank Ritter. Uh, some of the stories of coming across what that was like. I mean, so they walked all the way, you know. And Couldn't have been easy. Kind of and reason. he was the yeah. writer. I think he was an orphan too. He got taken in by some other family, and he walked all the way to California. So there you are. That's Amazing. my little pioneer. Right. Anyway. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's see what else. Okay. Um, I mean, oh, how did Paul Revere get the? I mean, how did Cyrus? I mean, get the Paul Revere commission? How did that start? Well, like in the beginning. <laughs> so there was a contest back in April of 1883. Okay. Um, for um, a sculpture to be erected in Copley Square, and it was the one that best depicted um, the Paul Revere 
poem kind of brought the poem to life of, of Paul Revere's Kenny ride Way's by, poem, by yeah. Longfellow's poem. Along, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, good, yeah. So Cyrus, there was a three hundred dollar cash prize for 300? this contest. Yep, big bucks back in those days. And yes. Cyrus um, was twenty one at the time, and that would have been a very attractive commission for him, a, mm -hmm. a, award for him. The commission would have been more ultimately. Um, so he put in a piece along with other sculptors, including Daniel Chester French. French? Yep, the big, uh, the big guy, Daniel Chester French, um, who did the Lincoln Memorial. Lincoln Memorial, you've heard yeah. of that one, I'm sure. Okay. And so. uh, Dallin won the contest. And he beat the big guy. He did. Wow. He did. And, um, 21, you said? He was just 21? He was just 21. He'd only 21. been here for three years. Upstart. Mm-hmm. And um, when the Boston art world heard about this, they were very, very concerned that this 21-year-old no one from the Wild West had <laughs> won the contest, wow. and they wanted to run the contest again. That's uh, not fair. Yeah, it's not fair. They kind of found a loophole. Um, they said that it, you know, most of the en most of the entrants um, showed Revere kind of looking for the signal, mm -hmm. but technically the signal was not for Paul Revere. It was for he told them to put it up there. I know. Yeah. I know. I've read <laughs> some about this. Well, yeah. they they found a way out of that to run to run the contest again. Oh. So, and they were also hoping for um, an entry by Thomas Ball who I never know, knew who that was before I started working for the museum. But uh, Thomas Ball did the George Washington Monument in okay. um, Boston Public Garden, which oh, is where okay. that beautiful equestrian Beautiful, was. yes. He was in Florence at the time, so mm -hmm. they wanted to give him an opportunity to submit the piece. So again, the contest was uh, rerun in May of 1883, mm -hmm. um, anonymously, so it would be impartial. Mm -hmm. And Dallin won it again. He won again. <laughs> he won it again. So they're like, okay, well, there's no, can't make this yeah. up. <laughs> there's no denying it. Just, he's the winner. But they did want him to make some modifications. Oh, modifications. Huh? Yep. So he set to work on those. And in November of 1884, mm -hmm. he submitted the modified version, mod number three. Mm -hmm. um, and it was accepted. Finally. And when this was finally reported in the newspapers, uh, they unfortunately referred to him as Charles Dallin, the winner, uh, which huh. is very discouraging. But yeah, uh, <laughs> make it. Then. But um, if there are a few hiccups after that, unfortunately, um, when Cyrus moved to Boston to study with uh, a man named Truman Bartlett, they did not have the um, the best. Uh, Best relationship. James was telling yeah. my husband and I about that. They was yeah, very yeah. tumultuous relationship. Yeah. Huh. Um, Maybe jealousy. And, do you think? Well, I think that that could be jealousy. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, Dallin had some other things that he was uh, doing. He was working um, at um, a monument factory in Quincy just to make money doing headstones and that okay. kind of thing. Right. And and um, Bartlett thought that was beneath him. He should be, you know, more he focused just on his. He yeah. Should starve so okay. so they didn't they yeah. didn't get along great. And um, when the news of the success of the third monument um, proposal was was put in the paper, uh, Bartlett came out of the woodwork mm -hmm. and. Uh, put his own piece in the newspaper about huh. how Dallin's monument was an impossible man on an impossible horse. What? And he just, he, he bad-mouthed Dallin, and I think between the initial concern about Dallin being so mm -hmm. young, mm -hmm. earning this commission, the words from this prominent sculptor instructor, um, and plus the lack of funds, kind of shelved the project for so then for a while. Let's see. Yeah. The, let's see some <laughs> of the pictures we have of the um, yeah. early uh, versions that uh, Dolan did. I think. Oh, uh, number yeah. third monument, third model. I should say. I shouldn't call it model. The third mon Which model gets stalled. Oh, he gets he stalled. Go, but he goes on with his life, and he mm -hmm. goes to Paris, and he studies in Paris. He mm -hmm. works on some other commissions. He's doing great. He comes back in 1892 mm -hmm. to find out that his third model is missing. It's missing? It's missing, yeah. 
So it, in order to renew interest in the project, he creates a number four, number in, four. in 1892. Um, Which one is this? Is this? So that's number four. Oh, good. Yep. good. Well done. Yep. <laughs> um, but doesn't really get the attention that it needs to, to get the, the project to move okay. forward. Mm -hmm. So in 1889, he creates number five. Which number five. That's number five. That's number five. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the one that most... Um, Museums or collectors have a number five. They have a number. Why um, is that? Because in 1937, Dallin um, wanted, wanted to make some money out of this project. Oh, <laughs> so really? he um, he dealt with the Cap Cap P. P. Caproni and Brothers, mm -hmm. and he had them cast several of these in plaster, and those were sold to museums or libraries or people just people who wanted to collect just collectors of this piece sure. so when you see them around mm -hmm. <laughs> they're usually uh, if you see them on other places other than the, the one on the Prado and the North End they're okay. usually number five so. they're usually number five that's interesting so that oh. one was 1889 yeah. and in the early 1930s um, he created this number six. Number, that's number six. Um, and fortunately, by this point, um, there was a fund called the George Robert White Fund. Oh, they um, were a trust that had uh, funds for uh, beautification projects in the city of Boston. Uh, and they were going to help out with this project to, mm -hmm. to, to finally pay for it. But they were kind of on the fence about whether it felt in it fell within the parameters of of their trust. How could it? So not? poor yeah. Dallin is just you know we have to give him a lot of credit for his tenacity because I think absolutely. a lot of people would have given up by then. You think, um, I'm done with this. Yeah, but he <laughs> exactly. created another one. Another one, and that's the one that he submitted with. Um, with the parody poem. So he created a parody uh -huh. of Longfellow's Paul Revere's Ride okay. as, uh, as part of his appeal for funding from the George Is Robert White Fund. Is that what White you were Fund. citing to me earlier? And that was the one that begins and with, can... listen my children and you shall hear of the ignoble failure of Boston to rear the greatest creation of my long career, the equestrian sculpture of Paul Revere. <laughs> Nicely well, and done. I think it, yeah. well, there's Nicely a lot done, more of it. Yeah, it is. It's if terrific. If you go to our YouTube page, you can see Mr. McGuff recite it. He does the best job with that. He actually, when I was there, he recited <coughs> oh, that whole, the whole thing. thing. I yes. was astounded. It is amazing. It's really <laughs> And fun. he does it's a great job with it. Oh, and yeah. it's not only that he knows it, his, his presenta yes. presentation of it. Right, yeah. right. Right, spot on. Exactly. I love yes. it. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Someday I'll, 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 I'll aspire to that. Oh, <laughs> but for now, you're just getting the first stanza. Yeah, she got the first stanza. Down. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, they got the funding. They got the contract signed. Okay. Um, it was only well, he was only going to get twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars for it. He was expecting closer to eighty thousand for it. Sure. Um, but I think his family just chimed in and said, "Forget. Don't worry about the money. You just this just needs to be completed." Yes. Um, and there were a couple of other little things that came up after that. Um, the clay. The you remember the clay. Well, he had to. Yeah, he had to get his own clay. He, he got had the to clay. Get his own clay? <laughs> he had to get his own clay. Sheesh. Yeah, from the school where he taught the Massachusetts okay. Normal Art School. So he's a teacher there. He was a teacher point. there. Okay. He'd been a teacher there for. Four, he was a teacher there for forty years. But they donated the clay, and he did this all by himself in his studio in Arlington. Um, a, ton, a ton of work and just just a um, mm -hmm. exhausting project for somebody that at, the, at that age. I think he was probably about 70, 75 at that 75 point. Seventy five, and he's yep. finally getting to this because it took a while yeah. longer after that. Right. Um, the the George Robert White Fund wanted him to have it cast at Thomas McGann Studio in Somerville, mm -hmm. uh, but Dallin preferred a studio, um, the Gorham Studio in Providence. Was it Providence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there were arguments about that, and oh. Cyrus was just you know going to kind of go on and have it done they should at, like at him. Gorham. They should know best, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Caproni were the people that had the just the, um, the model that that gets cast. They had it in it in their um, storage in Boston. Mm -hmm. And 
gangsters broke into the studio and and stole parts of the sculpture. No. It's like no. Just, what is it? Like I guess the, the, the story goes, the, the, head goes the head of the head horse. And the, and the, the head of the horse? Like the and the leg. Yeah, it's like the godfather. Yep. And, and, and yep. the uh, da, leg that's da, da, raised. Da, da, da. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. They stole major pieces of oh. it. So Caproni and Son had no choice but to send... Send the pieces to McGann. Because it um, ended up because, in McGann's because workshop. the head and those other pieces and mysteriously showed up. Mysteriously McGann's. appeared. So, yeah, it was, it was a bit heavy-handed, but they got their way with that, and it was cast by the McGann studio. And finally, in, on September 22nd, 1940, it was put in place in the Prado and Boston's North End. Um, there was a, a big to-do... Um, the the mayor was there. Okay. The head of the George Robert White Fund was there. Mm -hmm. uh, a descendant of Paul Revere was there. Like eight year old Paul mm -hmm. Revere Jr. Oh. Um, was there, and it, it was uh, it, a lot of speeches, a lot of fanfare. Mm -hmm. um, they had a little bit of time left for Cyrus Allen to say a few things at the end of the program, and I think he was just so exhausted by that point that he just got up there and said thank you very much and sat back down. Well, yeah, you know, this is the part that really yeah. is annoying, very annoying to me. Is James was talking about the same thing you just you know told the audience here. He he's gone all through this. I mean, how many years at this point? Forty yeah. something. Fifty seven. Fifty seven. Oh, more. Fifty seven <laughs> years. Do you think yeah. you'd give the guy a little bit of credit for this? I know. And you have all these <laughs> high mucky mucks getting up there, like taking credit for this. Yeah. Well, they they were the, some of them were right getting in the way. Yeah. Not only not helping, yeah. getting in the way. And they can't even let the poor artist say a few words about this. Yeah. How he was inspired him. to do do the statue this way. I would want to, when people want to hear that. Well, I, think, yeah. I would. Why did you persist so long? Or that people should know how long it took. Because right. I never knew that. When you go see that statue, there's no there's no write-up or anything about the background right. of the creation they've, of they've, it. Well, they've changed some Have of they? that and put it on a, there's a wall to the left. A wall, a wall to the left? A wall or a fence uh -huh. that borders the Prado. And I think there's signage there. There's signage there, yeah. F finally. Yeah. 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 Mm. It was it was his first and last major commission. Started it when he was twenty one. Yeah. <laughs> Started when he was twenty one and it was completed when he was seventy nine years old. Seventy nine yep. years old. Amazing Incredible story. That's just an amazing story. And I know he's got his name some a little bit on the base of it. Yeah. But in front of it he would need a ladder here. to see that. Huh? You'd need a ladder to see that. Yes. <laughs> well, don't you think they should have had his name down? I yes. mean I this could be corrected by the city. It may have been by the um, North End uh, Association. But couldn't they be approached to say, why don't we give but, the... But they may have done that with a si more signage now. Oh, they may have? They I'll may go down there and take a look. And yes. If anybody goes gets there before I do, get a report back to me, all right? <laughs> I want to find out what the story right, is on that. Right, because they were, they were talking about signage. They were? For the, for the 150th <clears throat> birthday of Cyrus Dallin, which is, what, 2012? Um, yep. The, the North End Association are... are oh, oh, good. They stepped forward, huh? Yeah. Well, it was a, quite a celebration, and Menina was there. And Is that the when they had the day? The Dallin Day. It was like, I, I, when yeah. I was walking, I saw the proclamation. It was up on a mantle. Yep. Yeah. And I said to Jane, wait a minute. I, I want to see this. I saw that. And so he had just finally had a day. Yeah. Right. That, that's a proclamation. Right. It's because I, I have also worked to try to put a spotlight on somebody. I've mentioned to you Sarah Bradley Fulton. All right. And so for uh, two years ago, we started the first uh, now annual Sarah Bradley Fulton Day. But there's people living on Fulton Street who have no idea that who was named after or who she was. Yeah. So that's been my mission. Mm -hmm. But I know there's people... It's a hard job. It is tough. Oh, my goodness. There was a stone with all about her, a beautiful stone, that was in the DPW yard. Okay? Somebody just put it there among the debris. We don't know mm -hmm. who. I'm not casting dispersions. A friend of mine pulled up. He was doing, running the um, Chris Donovan as the, the historical trolley. He pulls up to this fence. He says, Laura, get out and look behind the fence. I said, what do you mean I have to get off? No, get off. Go look. So I go out there and I go like, what's this? And it's got a beautiful bronze plaque all oh. about her. What's this doing here? And, you know, so uh, but I finally decided I had to do something about it. It took me three months, which a lot of people have told me 
that was really fast going hmm. through state bureaucracy because I wanted to put it where a state property, but it was my, myself and seven wonderful men. The Commissioner of, of Public Works, Tim McGibbon, also um, Traffic Guy, um, Paul, uh, our, our state um, <clears throat> uh, representative, Paul Donato. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people came to help, and when they finally got it out of there, we got permission, access permit. That's another thing. <laughs> yes. With Mass Dot, I learned a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we got it moved, and they built a beautiful pedestal. It's right by Craddock Bridge. So if you see that when you're driving by, it's got, I've got two revolutionary flags on uh, on either side mm -hmm. of it now. Beautiful. The DPW guys built this beautiful pedestal. Oh, for that's it. wonderful. But you know, yeah. again, this comes from a citizen. I mean. From your museum, mm -hmm. you know, to get things done, you can't wait for government to do stuff. No, they're too busy. They're I mean, too they, busy with other and, things. And they That's have true. a lot of paperwork, and they have responsibilities, and, and an additional project is not necessarily what they can manage. Right. Yeah, no, you're right. So that's why I really urge, if you see something like this, step forward and do something, because right. you can succeed. Right. It may take a while, but it, you can. You're not, you, you're not sitting there with no power. You know, and people will help. I mean, you've made yes. phone, you've made uh, phone calls to town hall yes. or, or wherever the state, and people say, "Oh, yeah, well, I mean, I, you should talk to so and so, or I could do this." So we, it takes time, but you can get it done. Yeah, the his, I should mention John Anderson of the Historic Society and Doug Carr from the Historic mm -hmm. Commission. So I had to get two other people to approve the place. I went walking around. Where can we put it? Has to be by the bridge. Has to be on this side of the bridge because that's what it said is where it's placed. And as John uh, Harrison is the president of the Historic Society, he said, well, we can't put it where it probably really was in the middle of the street there. <laughs> I said, probably not. So I found this piece of land, Mass Dot, you know, and what we got it done, they all That's pulled fantastic. together. Good for you. And it was, I think it was very exciting. Yes. Very a exciting. Great, a great accomplishment. <laughs> now yeah. we want to get a statue. Of course. Built, and I'd like to have that uh, Bob, done. The Bob, Bob. Bob, Bob Shaw, yeah. who you know, fabulous Bob. Yeah, he is fabulous. He, he um, is fabulous. He said, so I've now set up a, a nonprofit, which is to raise the funds to put a statue of, of Sarah Bradley Fulton in Medford. Um, we're looking at possible locations. It could be anywhere, maybe the library or maybe it's City Hall. I'm not sure. What's your, what's your goal for your fundraising? The goal, how much do I have to raise? It's up, it, I have to raise about fifty or 60000 However... There's a fellow in, well, he used to, he's from here, Robert uh, Bonsignore, who is a lawyer, trial lawyer. Oh, yeah. And uh, he now lives in Las Vegas, but mm -hmm. I discovered him on Facebook. He's from Medford. He's from Medford. He's the one who paid for that lovely performance hall that's at the new library. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I, Wasn't yeah. that generous? Yeah. We had, um, of course, uh, um, uh, Bloomberg paid for a lot of this, that whole right. thing, but, but Robert actually wrote it wrote the check for that his mm. name is on there and i got to know him because via facebook i invited him to come on the show because he loves medford so mm -hmm. much he's mm -hmm. always you know and so i have to tell you he flew in from las vegas where he lives to be on this show excellent and so i got to know him but the reason i mentioned him he said to me he heard about the the, the project to get a statue uh he said i will match five thousand so we're getting, we're inching close. So mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah, and also we're applying yeah. found. Now that we're a nonprofit, we can apply to foundations to get yeah. serious yeah. money. So that's my mission. But I really admire people like you getting involved in this kind of thing and what James did. This Thank is you. how things get done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we're pretty excited too. Um, we received a, a, a bronze of the model number five, the Paul Revere Did Monument, you? from the Unum Insurance Company. Uh, they were formerly the Paul Revere Insurance Company in, okay. in Worcester, and the Unum now closed their offices. And oh. they donated a bronze of the Paul Revere Monument to the museum. And we are very excited to have gotten a grant um, from the town of Arlington, mm -hmm. and we are hoping to have that placed outside of the museum um, by the end of 2023. You know, things Wonderful. sometimes take longer than oh, yes. you want them to, but ideally that would be when we would have our, our very own Paul River Monument outside of the museum. So Fabulous. Hopefully that raise the visibility of the museum as well. So, so when you have that, yeah. maybe we'll have ours. <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> we'll have mutual parties <laughs> together. I think so. I think we'd like to maybe collaborate more with, you know, Arlington and Metro. So I want to urge all of you to uh, 
make a trip over there to the um, the the Cyrus Dolan Art Museum, and it's a beautiful building too, I think, and uh, historic. So definitely go. What is the address on that? It's 611 Massachusetts Avenue 611. in Arlington. It's right near the uh, Minuteman Bike Trail. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes. And we are open on Saturdays and Sundays from noon to 4. Mm -hmm. Come and visit us, and one of our fantastic docents can give you the tour. Or yes. Or you can roam around and um, just ask. It's know, wonderful. It's not know. far. It's not far. Yep. You don't have to pack a lunch to go there. No. No, no, no. no, no. Yep, oh. There's a big uh, municipal lot right behind the museum, too, so it's Convenient yes, it parking. is convenient. I found that one um, too. And if you don't have the time to come in, you can always go to our website, www.dallin.org. Mm -hmm. And we also have a YouTube page, which, ha which has a lot of really fun content. Um, there's gallery spotlights. Um, there's programs we've done with other organizations and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fun stuff on there if you want to check some, out the YouTube page. Do you have some like parting comments about mid uh, future directions? I know you've got this... Paul Revere image uh, statue that's coming, but any com final comments um, that you want to we're not, include? We're not sure what our projects are going to be for next year because we have to do our budget and we have to consider. Oh, okay. Also, um, we we do have people supporting us in Arlington, like the mm -hmm. the CPA, the Community Preservation Act. Good. Yeah. And, yes, and Freedom's Way uh, Heritage Area has been very supportive. So we have to define our project, and and then, of course, a lot of times we're looking for matching money, or sure, where we've got to have the cash to do to add to mm -hmm. what we might not get in a um, an award or a grant or something like that. And you're still looking for more art that might be out we're there. We're always right? looking <laughs> for more Cyrus Dallin art, or or his uh, students. We've had mm. a couple of donations um, of works of art by his students because oh. he he taught for he sc oh. taught sculptor for forty years. Yes, at what is now Mass College of Art and Design, mm -hmm. and one of his um, students, Ann Philbrook Hall designed the um is it a dog? husky it's a husky <laughs> yes i should know it's yeah. a husky it's a husky yes right? so she she and she's done lots of dog sculptures and we had an exhibit of hers um you need one next to the cat <laughs> we do well we now that have great? we now do have a dog yeah. do you remember yep. the name of that um, is it sleeping Do doberman uh, the sleeping doberman yep that one is by another student of his um a, a, a young woman who um her family immigrated from Belarus, mm -hmm. uh, Bashka Paif, mm -hmm. and um, she has a lot of sculptures around the area, actually. There's one, uh, a Revolutionary War monument in Lexington. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a beautiful fountain in Boston Public Garden. There's mm -hmm. another monument up in Kittery, so there's a lot of her pieces part around. Of his, part of his legacy. Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, not exactly. just his work. Yep. Right. But now you all know the story behind the iconic image of the Paul Revere and uh, the appeal to the great spirit. So thank exactly. You. I want to thank you two ladies for coming on the show. Well, and I have thank a gift you for, for the invitation. Ooh. It's not. It, no. Gift. <laughs> when you come on the show, Aww. you get a. You have to go open it up. And there's one. Thank you. You're thank get you. One. you thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You have to open it up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Oh, fabulous. Thank Perfect. you. Yeah, so when you're working on projects on the museum. Medford mug. I, I'm, That's I'm, terrific. I'm Medford. <laughs> I've lived in Medford all my life. This so is you are. part of my towny collection now. Oh, great. Thank oh, you very thank much. You so much. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> right. So now it's time to say goodbye, and I want to thank all of you for tuning in. So I hope to see you again on Looking Back at Medford History. Oh,